of my heart be the mountain where I run the fountain I drink from oh he is my song let the king of my heart be the shadow where I hide the ransom for my life oh he is my song for you are good I want to say welcome to Gracewood Community Church. I'm so glad that you decided to join us today. I want to say happy Independence Day. We get to celebrate our independence of our country, and it's really exciting. And I know there's a lot of things that go on during this time, maybe a little slower (laughs) with the pandemic. But, you know, it really causes me to think about the freedoms that we have, not only in our country, but also the freedoms we have in Christ. 
but also the freedoms that we give up in order to love our neighbor as well as what God's called us to do. And so we think about the things that are in our lives that we can do and we have the freedom to do, but also the things that maybe we ought not do in order to love our neighbor a little bit better. So I would challenge you guys today throughout the course of this week, I know we just celebrated the 4th of July, but consider what it is that God may be calling you to give up in order to love your neighbor. Just a thought, but we're so excited that you're here. Looking forward to the message here in just a moment, but let's continue to worship God together today. starts to vanish every hopeless situation oh it ceases to exist and when you walk into the room yeah the dead begin to rise because there is resurrection life in all you do permission our hearts are yours we want you we want you come and consume god all we are we give you permission our hearts are yours we want you yeah we want you come and consume god all we are we give you permission our hearts are yours we want you yeah we want you oh. so come and consume god all we are we give you permission our hearts are yours we want you yeah we want you
Well, hey, everybody, and welcome to Gracewood Community Church. I'm so excited that you're here. Today, we are in week number two of our series called The Sickness in Us. And so if you have your Bibles with you or maybe even a Bible app, let's go ahead and open those to the book of James. In the New Testament, James chapter 3 is where we're going to start. The sickness in us that we're going to examine today is envy. Envy. And we all have to acknowledge at one level or another, at one time or another, envy affects us all. It really does. It affects all of us. And you can see it early on, even in a kid's life. You know, a child will be happy with a toy until they see their sibling or maybe a friend that has a different toy, and then they envy that one. I've seen some some envy at my house for sure. We've got four kids and you can only imagine the envy that we've seen over the years. Uh, We've had and will have a lot more teeth falling out in our house as they lose their teeth. And when the tooth fairy comes at our house, yes, I've been known to be rather conservative financially. And yes, maybe even stingy or tight when it comes to such things. But the going rate for the tooth fairy retrieving a lost tooth at our house is, is $1, $1. And little did I know, evidently, the economy is a little bit better at some of your houses, okay? And maybe with inflation, I I don't know, maybe, maybe the going rate has gone up because one of our kids came home one time and said, you know what, daddy, you're, you're not going to believe this. We, and, and listen, the day before she was tickled to death with her dollar, but she said, we only get a dollar from our tooth fairy and, and -and so-and-so the tooth fairy brings them $5 for each tooth. $5. Can you believe that? And, and my kid was just beside herself and couldn't figure this out. And she said, Daddy, why, oh, why do we only get $1? And I said, uh, well, uh, you know, I, uh, I, and she kind of came to my rescue a little bit. And she said, Daddy, maybe we could find out which tooth fairy they use and we could use that one too. <laughs> you know, envy, envy. It affects all of us. But is it really a big deal? I mean, is it a big deal to kind of maybe want a little bit of what somebody else has or something that that we don't have? Is envy really a big deal in our lives? So let's look at what Scripture has to say and see how Scripture answers that question. James chapter 3, verse 14 and following, the Word of God says this, but if you harbor bitter, bitter what? Help me out with this. If you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts. Do not boast about it or deny the truth. Verse 15, such wisdom does not come from heaven, but, now this is important, okay, but it is earthly, unspiritual, and of the devil. Earthly and unspiritual and of the devil. And I want you to pause right there for just a moment. Is envy a big deal? It's earthly, it's unspiritual, and it's of the devil. Let's read on, verse 16. For for where you have envy and selfish ambition, what do you find? There you will find disorder and every evil practice. Is it a big deal? Well, it's an extremely big deal. It is a sickness, a sinful sickness that affects us at, at all kinds of different levels. At one level or another, we'll find it. And today we're going to ask God to deal with it. We're going to ask God to deal with the sickness in us. So let's start here. We're, we're going to work with the definition of envy. And for our purposes, we will define envy this way. So if you're taking notes, what is envy? Well, envy is resenting God's goodness in others' lives. Well, you know, they, they've got it and I want it and they don't deserve it. And, and they shouldn't even have it in the first place. It is resenting the goodness of God in people's lives, other people's lives, while at the same time, I want you to get this, taking notes, 
while at the same time ignoring God's goodness in my own life. Resenting his blessings to others while ignoring all of his blessings to us. Now, where will, where will you find envy? Well, you'll find it in all sorts of places. For you, you might have a little bit of physical envy, okay, ladies? You might see a girl who's, who's got a different body type than you do, and you go around saying, well, you know, I wish I looked different. I wish I looked different, or whatever. Guys, <laughs> you might see another guy out there and say, man, you know, I wish I had some hair like that guy. You know, I mean, look at his hairline. I mean, he's still got hair up front. And, you know, I, I wish I had less hair on my back and more hair on my head. You know what I'm talking about and whatever, whatever it could be for you. It could be relational envy. And you'll see two girls and they're, they're not married and they, they are great friends. They love hanging out. They're having a blast. And then one girl gets a boyfriend and the other one goes, oh, this is so unfair. This is not fair at all. And she's got a boyfriend and oh, she, she got engaged and, and she's flapping that ring around like, like she's all that, you know. You, you see it all the time in marriages as well. You know, her husband, well, he actually helps around the house and he has a good job. And my husband, well, he's just like a bump on a log. And I wish my husband was fill in the blank. Well, you know, his, his wife is always encouraging him and she's so positive. And my wife, well, uh, <laughs> I just wish mine was more like her, right? Some people envy different stages in life. Isn't it odd how when you, when you are a little bit younger and, and you're growing up, you're like, you know, man, I can't wait to get older. When I get to be 16, I'll be able to drive and it's going to be great. And then maybe you go to college, you get out of college, and then you're excited about getting a job and, and, and going into the real world. And then before long, you're like, dude, if, if I was just back in college, wouldn't that be awesome? You know, life was so easy back then. And, and you envy things that you don't have or places that you are not. And a lot of people envy talent. Talent. I wish I could sing like so-and-so. I wish I could dance like Napoleon Dynamite. Whatever you might think. I wish I could, I wish I could hit a golf ball like Tiger Woods. I wish, I wish I was smart like Elon Musk. You know, a lot of people will have material envy. And, and you know, this is kind of sad, you know, but it's like, man, if I only had that job, or if, if I only made a lot of money like old so-and-so, then I'd be happy. Then I'd be happy. But just think about it. I could get a car. You know, I, I could actually have a car, you know. <laughs> I, could, I could have a car with under 200,000 miles on it. If I just had that boat, or if I just had that ATV, oh, if I just had the bigger TV or the phone with the better camera, that's all I'm asking. Envy. Envy. Resenting God's goodness in someone else's life while ignoring his goodness in our own lives. Where do you find envy in Scripture? Well, the answer is you find it all over the place. But I've listed for you a few for you to study. In Genesis chapter 4, verse 5, we talked a little bit about Cain and Abel last week, but Cain envied his brother Abel. God accepted Abel's offering and did not accept Cain's offering. Cain got envious and it led to murder. There, you find every kind of evil practice and disorder when you, when you look at envy. Genesis chapter 30, verse 1, Rachel envied Leah. Why? Because Rachel couldn't have a baby, and she envied her. Later on in verse 15, it reversed, and Leah envied Rachel. A lot of envy going on. Genesis chapter 37, verse 5, remember Joseph and his brothers? Well, the brothers envied Joseph. Why? Because his father liked him the most and gave Joseph this really sweet coat because the father looked so favorably on Joseph because Joseph had these dreams and these visions and the brothers envied him and beat him up, their own brother, they threw him into a pit and then sold him into slavery. First Samuel chapter 18 verses 7 through 9, Saul, the king, envied David, the shepherd boy, turned warrior all right? And when the people cheered for David and made up this little jingle about David and Saul, which really made Saul very mad, okay? The, the little jingle went like this, that Saul has slayed his thousands and David his tens of thousands. Saul envied David. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 13 through 14, Lucifer envied God. Now remember, this is of the devil. 
Envy is of the devil. Mark chapter 15, verse 10 shows us why Jesus was handed over. And that is because the chief priests envied Jesus. Is envy a big deal? Absolutely. It's earthly. It's unspiritual. And it's of the devil. So what does it do in our lives? What does envy do in our lives? Well, Proverbs chapter 14, verse 30 tells us, A heart at peace gives life to the body, but what does envy do? Let's say this out loud together, but envy rots the bones. Rots the bones. Socrates said this, he was quoted saying this, he said, Envy is the daughter of pride, the author of murder and revenge, the perpetual tormentor of virtue. Envy is the filthy slime of the soul, a venom, a poison which consumeth the flesh and drieth up the bones. It rots us like cancer from the inside. It is terrible for us, both physically, mentally, and spiritually. All three of those. A a question that I want you to ask yourselves today is this. What or who do you envy? Who or what do you envy? And be honest. I'll tell you what I envy. I envy envy preachers who, who teach really deep biblical truths. I do. I envy people who are off on the weekend. <laughs> you know, there are times when, when I envy people whose job ends at five o'clock. Mine doesn't end. It never ends. And people go home, day's over, you know. And I'm prone to envy that. And those things, they rot my bones. They rot my bones. So who or what do you envy? Because those things will rot your bones. It's earthly. It's unspiritual. And it's of the devil. So the sickness in us, the the sinful sickness that we have, what do we do about it? What do we do about it? Well, today we're going to look at one thing we're not going to do, and Scripture is going to give us and teach us two things to do. So the first thing that we're going to talk about is what not to do, and we're not going to compare or rank ourselves with or against other people. No comparisons. No comparisons. And we've been talking about this over the last few weeks. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12 says this, We do not dare classify or compare ourselves, and yet this is the tendency. You know, well, they they have a better house than me, or I've got a better house than them, or they've got this and we've got that. And where do we rank in all this? We'll not do that. We're not going to do that as followers of Christ. The disciples, they often did this. And when Jesus was restoring Peter after his fall, and we talked about this a few weeks ago, Peter prophesied about how Peter would one day die and then said, above all, feed my sheep and follow me. And and what did Peter do? Peter said, okay, but, but what about John? What about John? John chapter 21, you can read this. What about John? What, what's going to happen to him? And Jesus said, basically, Peter, that's none of your business. Don't compare. The disciples asked, you know, who, who's the most important? Who, who gets to sit by Jesus? Who's the greatest among us? Do you know how dangerous this is when we start to classify people's ranks and importance? This is extremely dangerous. It, it brings out this ungodly sinfulness whenever we rank or compare. We, we don't view people in hierarchies. It's simply wrong. We love people and we care for them. Galatians chapter 6, verse 4. Each one should test his own actions without comparing himself to someone else. No comparisons. No comparisons. That, that's what we're not going to do. We are not going to compare. All right? So what are we going to do? What is it that we are going to do? Two positive things that come from biblical perspective. Instead of resenting God's goodness in others' lives, we are going to, number one, celebrate God's goodness to others. We're going to celebrate God's goodness to others. Romans chapter 12, verse 15, teaches us this principle. God's Word says to rejoice with those who rejoice and mourn with those who mourn. Somebody gets something that that you were hoping for? Rejoice with those who rejoice. You know, one of the greatest examples of this is in Scripture. And I remember we talked about King Saul uh, envying David. Well, if you know the whole story, King Saul had a son named Jonathan. And David and Jonathan were, were best of friends. Now, rightfully, 
Jonathan was the heir to the throne. He was son of King Saul, and you can only imagine, it was probably his whole life, he, he was dreaming about this. One day, I'm going to be king. I'm going to be king. Well, God had other plans, and God had David anointed to be king over Israel. It was a change of plans. So, you would expect Jonathan to be angry about that and be jealous. Well, Saul was jealous of David and came after David, trying to kill him. But what did Jonathan do? Well, look at what he said. This is absolutely profound in 1 Samuel chapter 23, verse 17. He said this to his friend, David, don't be afraid. He said, my father Saul will not lay a hand on you. You will be king over Israel and I will be second to you. I'll be second to you. I will serve you. I've got your back. I'm going to cover you. I will serve you and I will rejoice with you. you you've got what's really mine. And, and what I wanted, but God had something else planned. More power to you, and I celebrate with you. Isn't that cool? You want the promotion? Somebody else got it. Congratulations. You know, I'm happy for you. You were hoping to get something, and somebody else got it? Way to go. You know, way to go. I'm proud of you. You know, you're praying for something that you so desperately want, and God hasn't delivered that to you yet? And someone else gets that same kind of answer prayer. Awesome. Way to go. I'm excited about what God's doing in your life. Rejoice with those who rejoice instead of resenting their blessings. We celebrate it. It's, it's the first positive thing. No comparisons and celebrate God's goodness to others. The second positive thing that we're going to do is instead of ignoring God's goodness in our own lives, number two is embrace God's goodness to you. Embrace it. We're going to embrace God's goodness to us. Ecclesiastes chapter 6, verse 9 says this. Better what the eye sees than the roving of the appetite. This too is meaningless, a chasing after the wind. Better what God has put right in front of you, better what God has given you than looking over at everybody else and what somebody else has and that their grass is greener. Your appetite can always rove. It can always look for other things and for more. Oh, well, they've got this. Well, they've got that. And they've got this that's newer. And this is bigger. And better what God has already given you. Say, so I'm thankful. I'm grateful. I'm celebrating your goodness than the roving of the appetite to greener pastures. Now, truthfully, someone else may have a greener yard than you. But don't forget this principle, all right? I don't want you to forget this. Their yard may appear greener, but it's just because you can't see the poop in their yard from where you're standing, all right? I don't want you to forget that. It, it, it may be greener, but they've got poop in their yard too. They, there have been times that people have come to me and said, Tim, man, I, I wish I had your life. And you know what? I've got a great life and, and no question about it, but there is a lot of poop in my yard, Okay? There, there's a lot of stuff that goes on behind the scenes that's not very visible. And just because it's greener somewhere else, don't forget there's hard times everywhere and with everyone. Also, if the grass is greener somewhere else, maybe it's time for you to start watering your own yard. Water it. Help it to grow and nurture it. Maybe it's time for you to look at what God's given you and say, I am thankful for that. Here, here's, what, here's what I found for me. I've noticed this, and, and God really pointed this out, and I've really been working to not do this anymore. But, but what I found is I did something that had to have been incredibly insulting to the heart of God. And that is, I would qualify my thankfulness. Oh, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm really thankful for the house that God has given us, but here's what I wish was different. Oh, yeah, I, I love what, what I get to do, but you know, here's what I don't like about my job. And what God has shown me is to kill your butts. <laughs> kill my butts, okay? No more butts. I'm thankful for the house that God has provided, period. I'm thankful for what I do, period. Kill your butts. Be thankful. No more buts. Embrace God's goodness to you. Scripture says this way in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16 through 18. Always be joyful. 
Keep on praying, no matter what happens, always be thankful. For this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. Do you belong to Christ Jesus? Be thankful. Be satisfied. Be fulfilled in that. Envy. It is a big deal. It is a big deal. It is earthly. It is unspiritual. And it is of the devil. And behind it, you find every kind of evil practice and disorder. It rots the bones. So I told you those areas that uh, I'm prone to envy in. And so let me just talk through them again with my renewed mind and, and tell you where I am today. So I tend to envy deep Bible teachers, people who teach these deep spiritual truths. Well, let me tell you, I'm just, I'm just not wired to do that. What do I do well? Well, other people have told me that I relate to other people well. So I try my best to teach things that I deal with and relate it to others and to everyday life. And when I do that, as shallow as it may seem, the power of the Holy Spirit, of the Spirit of God, does something. And in His power, it changes lives. Therefore, I will continue to do it. And, and I'm thankful that I'm gifted and wired in that way, period. Secondly, I, I don't have the weekends off, right? But let me tell you what I do have. It's, it's amazing. I, I can take Fridays off on weeks that allow, and the church gives me flexibility in my schedule, and I am thankful that God provides for my family, period, period. I envy those uh, whose jobs end at five o'clock, right? You know what? I'm thankful that instead of my biggest goal being out there making money or making money for somebody else or making widgets or whatever it might be, I get to make an eternal difference in the lives of people. I'm thankful that God has called me to do this work, period. And I hope that you'll apply these principles to your life as well. So let me close with a story that I heard not too long ago from a pastor that I listened to. He said when he was first starting in ministry, there was this six-year-old girl who was dying. And their church was praying for her, and she continued to get worse and continued to get worse. And he actually went to see her in the hospital, and he just looked at this precious little girl. And he said, sweetheart, what, what do you want? Anything. You name it. What do you want? Anything. You name it, and I'm going to go get it for you. And he said that he will never forget what this little girl did. She looked up at him. Her head was bald. She had lost her hair after a couple different treatments. And instead of saying, oh, I just want to play like other kids or whatever you might think, this little six-year-old girl looked at him and she said, well, I've got my mommy and my daddy here. I've got my two favorite sticker books. I've got my dolly. And I've got Jesus in my heart. She said, what else could a little kid want? He ended up having to do the funeral and the burial just a few weeks later for this little girl. And he said, that's one moment. That one little moment with her will stick with him forever and ever. And I don't know how your story goes, but here's mine. I get to serve the greatest God and get to do it full time. I get to love and share his truth with the greatest people in the world. And that's my calling. I've got my best friend, who is my wife, who has given her life to serve Jesus and to serve our family. I get to spend every day with her. I've got the greatest friends that, that I could ever ask for around me. I get to work with an incredible staff here at Gracewood. I've got Jesus Christ who is the Son of God who lives in my heart. What more could any guy ever ask for? What, can any, what could I want, you know? And I celebrate with all of you who have the weekends off, right? And I embrace God's goodness in your life. I embrace it in my life. And I hope that you can do the same and never envy again. Because Jesus, Jesus is enough. Would you pray with me today? Father, thank you so much for your unbelievable goodness to us. Forgive us when we're unspiritual, when we're earthly, and when we envy, knowing 
that it's of the devil. I pray that you would forgive us when we surrender to the envy in our own hearts. And so today I would ask you, you know what? Get honest. Be really, really honest with yourself and with God. Maybe you have a small problem with envy. Maybe you've got a big problem with envy. Whatever it is, let's confess those sins to God and ask him to forgive us and to cleanse us and say, no more, no more. Say, yes, envy is a problem for me. And God, forgive me and set me free from it. And maybe today you want to ask Jesus into your heart, into your life. And you see that that you have a God-sized hole in your heart. And you would say, today is the day I want to follow him. I've been envious. I don't want to live there anymore. And the only way I know how to stop it is to give my life over to God and allow him to transform my heart and my life. If that's you, just pray this prayer. Pray, God, I believe in your son, Jesus Christ. I believe that he died on the cross and rose from the grave three days later to forgive me of my sins. And he loves me. So Jesus, I give my life to you today. I surrender my life. You are the boss. You are the Lord of my life. And I want to follow you with everything that I've got. Pray, God, I give my life to you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, hey, guys, I want to say thank you so much for taking the time to join us here at Gracewood Community Church today. I'm excited to be able to share the gospel with you and also to see the gospel move forward as you continue to share it and take it out there to the people in your sphere of influence. I believe God's doing some incredible things through this period in time. I know it seems a little awkward. Maybe we seem like our opportunities are limited. But God is doing some amazing things through that. If you happen to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior today, we would love for you to share that with us. You can go on our app or you can go online and you can go to the Connect With Us portion and fill out a connection card, maybe a next step card there as well, and share that with us. And we would love to walk through the journey of following Christ with you because we believe that we are to lead people into a growing relationship with Jesus by doing life together. And so we want to do that. All right. And then also, um, got a few announcements for you. First off, we are going to be meeting with our youth. We've met the past couple weeks, but we're going to continue to meet um, in person uh, with a few things going on. So uh, you can check out some of the things on, on our youth stuff there and uh, know that we're wearing masks if you feel comfortable with that. Also, um, we have individually packaged snacks and stuff. We're, we're doing social distancing as best we can. And so we are meeting in person uh, for youth on Wednesdays at 6.45 and excited to see you there. Also, we are starting to meet with our children at the 11 o'clock service on Sundays. So we started Gracewood Kids Back, and so uh, excited to see you and your families come, and we're taking uh, extreme caution there, uh, taking temperatures at the door. Um, our, our volunteers are wearing masks as, as, as they go forward without uh, speaking. You know, they're, they're speaking, but uh, <laughs> they're not wearing their masks when they're speaking, but all the other times they're going to be wearing those masks. So uh, we're doing the best that we possibly can to try to keep this virus us away, but see the gospel continue to move forward and build relationships so that together we can be encouraged and move forward in our walk with Jesus Christ. Guys, I love you. Uh, I pray for you. If there's anything that we can do uh, to help you along, we want to know about that. We have a prayer request form on the app and online as well. And so if there's something going on in your life physically, spiritually, emotionally, let us know so that we can walk through that with you, pray for you. We pray for these things each and every week. And then I know that you guys ask me a lot about how to continue to give through this time, and you've been so generous and faithful to do that. But on the app, there's a place to give, and also online, you're welcome to do that as well. But guys, we love you. We pray for you. We'll see you next week.